God is good, isn't he? Amen. Doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you see. I don't go by what I see, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And it should be amen, amen, and amen. Well, again, welcome to Covenant Fusion Church. What a blessing that we're in the presence. What a time that we just had in worship. See, you're setting the atmosphere for the change of your life when you praise Him. God has no other choice but when you open your mouth and praise Him to come in and move through your circumstances. I'm excited today. I am so excited when I'm able to give God something back. I want to give Him everything, but man, is I watched Him move in my life, in my financial areas of my life, because I set the atmosphere for change. Over 25 years ago, when I stepped into a church, I was busted and broken, didn't know how I was going to pay my bills or feed my family. But when God's principles, I adhered to them and I applied them in my life, that's when I truly started moving forward in God's kingdom. I'm excited today to tell you I'm a living testimony. You can't outgive God. So if you're ready to give God, I told you at the beginning of this service, Christians are horrible about being prepared for things. Are you prepared for what God has for you? then you have to adhere to his principles and concepts. He's not trying to get something from you, but trying to get something to you in Jesus' name. And if you're going to give online, I know so many of you people are prepared, and you do ahead of time. Those are the ones I, I'm so excited for, because those are the ones that give me the testimony of what God's doing in every area of the life when they go ahead of God and get out before him. God's just watching them and saying, yes, that's my boy. Yes, that's my girl. You finally are listening. Go to covenantfusion.com. And give, go to the give button. Thank you again. I always love thanking people because God's a thankful God. And he expects us to be thankful instead of just walking around and expect people just to know that we're thankful. I thank you for giving to God's kingdom and God's work. You change my life when you do it because then I, I, I don't think this is for nothing. I see things coming to fruition in your life. That means that we're not wasting our time. And God's not wasting his time with me. Or this church, Covenant Fusion Church, is a great steward over what God's given us. And I love this psalm, Psalm 37, 25. I have been young and I have been old. I've never seen the, the righteous, excuse me, forsaken are his children begging for bread. And I love that because I'm never a beggar no more. I'm a, I'm a participant in God's kingdom, in his work. Because when you do what he says, he opens up that window of heaven and pours out some blessing you can't contain. So if you're ready today to give, if you've got your seed in your hand, your first fruits, hold it. Hold it up high. Don't be ashamed of giving to God. Don't be ashamed of what he asked you to do. Matter of fact, it's commandment on your life. You want your house taken care of? He says to take care of his house first. I don't want to be crying with people anymore over the lack of finances. I want to be exalted and lifted up because of your abundance in your financial life. Amen. Amen. When you're prepared, God's ready to move with you. He will take out the enemy. So if you're ready with me, I want to pray for you right now. Father, we lift you up and we glorify you. Thank you for setting up seed time and harvest principles, Father. Thank you for having the foreknowledge to understand we struggle with this, Lord. I pray right now that people are struggling with giving to the church, that they will just have faith. Your word says faith is small as a monster seed. That's so small that you, we can move mountains. I pray, Father, for financial mountains that are in people's way because they have a lack. And they're outside of the abundance, outside of the overflow, Lord, that their revolution and the revelation of your word will come into them today, that they're ready to listen to you. By doing that, you're setting the atmosphere for God to move financially in your life. I believe that right now. As people are hearing all over the world, somebody right here, right now, that's struggling with that. That their ears will hear your words. Holy Spirit, speak through them through the airwaves. Open their eyes to the truth of your word. Father, you don't lie. It will not come back void. Right now, I'm just giving people time to hear you. Speak to them, Lord. They're struggling in their finances. Breakthrough right now in Jesus' name. Overcoming right now in Jesus' name. Where there was no faith, the faith is there today. When we release what's in our hands, that God can do something with it. 
we won't be struggling no more. Why the world is falling apart. Why the banking systems is going to hell in a handbasket and it's not coming back anymore. Why the 401ks are going broke. Why the real estate market is going to be collapsing. You're going to be leading in those areas now because God's moving in front of you. God can take the enemy and push, squash him, deliver him, destroy him. He's under our feet now that we've given God control of our finances. I pray right now that the windows of heaven are opening for the first time for somebody right now. I believe it. And pouring out a blessing because now you're not stopping God. You're not hindering him no more. You're allowing him to be the conduit and the channel in your life for the financial blessing. Oh, financial blessing, overtake us right now. We need it today, Father. We need to be the light with our finances so we can take our eyes off ourselves and we can go and take care of the needs of people. We can feed them. We can provide for them. We can give them housing and clothing and things that they have that are struggling with. They will struggle no more. The revelation of God's seed time and harvest is coming alive right now through some people. I believe it with all my heart. Thank you, Lord, for your revelation. Your word, Father, is moving. Thank you, Jesus. I pray right now those who don't have a job, as you're giving out of your lack, I believe somebody's giving out of their lack right now because they have faith. Father, I believe that this Monday their answer's coming. It will come to them. The door will open where it was closed, where we don't have to knock it. It will just open on its own, Father. The roadblocks are gone because of our obedience. That somebody else said they got the position. You're getting it because the boss had a change of mind because God spoke to him and said, No, it was the wrong decision. Now I'm making the right decision. You're going to walk into a circumstance where you thought was closed. Now it's open because of your obedience. Thank you, God, for always telling us the truth. Thank you for the truth sets us free. Right now, I believe that there's increase coming in somebody's business because of your obedience. You're listening to God's word and his voice right now. Where you didn't know if you would have a contract. You didn't know if you were going to be able to pay your employees. That the bank account's going to be changed from negative to positive. We believe your word, God. Right now. We hit our knees, Father, and we give you complete control of our finances. Before, God, we knew we were robbing you. We knew we were double-minded. We forsake that now and we give up on that. We put the past behind and now we're moving forward where you are, Lord. Thank you so much for being a blessing in our lives, Lord. And today I declare freedom from financial struggles in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you so much. Covenant Fusion Church is a blessing to others because of people just like you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you once again for joining us here at a Sunday morning service at Covenant Fusion Church. It's always a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. And I know that he has something special for us this morning. If you have any prayer requests, please send them to 407-490-4019. Again, the number is 407 407- 490-4019. This power and prayer, the word says we're two or more gathered in his name, that he is in the midst of us. So I know that he hears our prayers. Amen? Yes. If you will go with me to Psalm 91, we want to declare that powerful scripture. We're going to decree and declare that with boldness from our hearts. Let's begin Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, and I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him I will trust. And surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste in noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. 
because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. And no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Amen. Well, now Pastor Sri is going to bless us and deliver the message. Be blessed. Thank you, Father. All right. All right, now I can see. <laughs> I don't even know. I didn't know Liz was that tall, but anyway. <laughs> we serve a great God, amen? amen? You know, he can turn the impossible into possible, you know. That's one thing I have learned. That's why I do not, I do not ever back down from a wrestling fight. Because at the end, we will win. If we don't wrestle, this is one of the things that all the Christians expect when it comes to following God or when, when we expect a miracle from God. We think, okay, God is sovereign, so he just is going to manifest himself in here. Um, there, the truth to it, there is some truth to it, but the truth is God only does miracles with our involvement. We have to be involved. You know, the word um, Israel means the one who wrestles with God. Every time you think of Israel, I want you to think of that name, one who wrestles with God. Jacob, who was a supplanter, who was a deceiver, learned how to wrestle with God. And because of that wrestling, it became a nation. It became a covenant keeper until the blood of Jesus have come. It has become that covenant keeper just because somebody learned how to wrestle with God. So I'm encouraging every one of us, do not give up on your wrestling. Wrestling means it's one of the most intense fights you can ever engage in. It's a very intense fight. It's body to body, every muscle against every muscle. You will feel like everything, you know, somebody says that, oh, who ran over you? Did a truck run over you? Yeah. A million of them will run over us when we go into the wrestling match. Certain, certain wrestling matches. Because we have the power against the enemy. How can you prove your power without you participating in a wrestling match? Amen? So don't, don't, don't let that deflect your faith or deflate your faith because you've been in a war. You've been in a wrestle. You've been in a challenge. Do not let that take away from the, the fact that you have faith to participate in that war. Amen? You know, um, I, want, I want us to also remember this thing. You know God has a claim over you, right? You know, when we're studying on this thing after the mantle, when, when, when the mantle has come upon us, when God has put his mantle upon us that is a claim over us he claimed us he made a claim over our life he made a claim over our existence he made a claim over what all we can be and we should be and when we are looking at it as an option we are always trying to negotiate with it because we look for a convenience we look for an exit strategy Every time. Every time our mindset is always about exiting. Exiting, exiting, exiting. You know, uh, 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 um, who is that? Shakespeare said that, right? Like life is like a play. Everybody comes in and exits out. That is, that, 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 in, 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 to an extent, it is true. But the truth is the exit only matters if you have played your part. 
If you don't play your part, exit, existing the uh, uh, exit is nothing. Exiting out of your exit is nothing because you haven't played your part. Because we are always running to the exit rather than working on how to play our part. And that is why Jesus has put a claim on your life. Claim on our life. He claimed it when the same way how Elijah went and threw his mantle over Elisha. He threw his mantle over Elisha for a certain claim. He claimed him for certain things. We've been studying on that. I want us to have that. We have a claim over our life. Jesus has a claim over my life. Amen. Let us do this. Jesus has a claim over my life. He claimed it when he put the blood over us. When he spread himself over us, he put a claim on us. That is the mantle that has come upon us. And when he has put that claim on us, what are we doing with that claim? This is where most of the Christians are. We try to negotiate with it. One of the greatest forms of worship is when you can fall flat. All the way down, all your body to the ground, and you give that absolute surrenderance. That is the best form of worship. Here in the Western culture, we don't have that. Half knees, half jerks, whatever, whatever we have. You know, when you go into any of the Eastern cultures, the first thing, if they ever want to make peace with somebody, if they want to show their adoration for this person, they fall flat at their feet. Even though we shouldn't be doing for men, let us do it for Jesus. Amen. Fall flat at him. And, and, and when he, you know, you, 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 whether you like it or not, you will be forced to. Remember this. That is how the story ends. Every one of us will be falling flat at his feet. May as well get used to it now. Living like that. Not my will. But your will. Not my plan, but your plan. Not my desire, but your desire, Lord. This also will help us overcome even our emotional weaknesses. I don't have the right to be sorrowful. Because he has a claim over me. Yeah, I want to cry. But no, 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 I can't be sorrowful. I want to hate somebody because they slapped me. Because he has a claim over me, I can. Amen. When you, when we understand the claim of the Lord, we not only become obedient, we also become operational. Because this push, pushes you to understand how much the claim that is upon us. He not only claimed you for obedience, he also claimed you for empowerment. He empowered us to act like him on this earth. We are his replacement, y'all. On this earth until he comes back. Because he dubbed his hand on the church. From now on, go to the whole world and preach this gospel. That is what he's saying, you know, in, 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 in um, uh, Western societies, particularly Roman society, we have these knights. The king is the only one who has the power, the king or the queen who is the supreme authority has the power to knight somebody. When you, are, when you have been given that, you have the power of the kingdom. Which would be very similar to us in this, in our society right now. Ambassador. An ambassador. There will only be a one ambassador. If you go to India, there will be one U.S. ambassador. He is the sole representation of the U.S. in that particular nation. I told this story in the past, I'll tell you again. You know, when I went to these embassy 
When I went to the, the Indian uh, uh, it's a, a consulate probably, when I went there for my visas to come here, I, one of the things that I, I was totally surprised, up until I went to the gate, there were this Indian army, Indian police, Indian everything. Once I passed that gate, even to the toilets, they are from the U.S. Even the urinals, when I saw that, I don't know these brands. But they are all from the U.S. because it is an ambassador. It is an embassy. It's something that represents that one representative. So here God has, Jesus have thrown that mantle upon us the same way Elijah have thrown the mantle on Elijah. What's the purpose, he says. 1 Kings 19, chapter 15th verse. The Lord said to Elijah, the Lord said to him, Go return on your way on the wilderness of Damas Damascus. And when you arrive, anoint Hezel as king over Syria. And you also shall anoint Jehu, the king of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, and Abel Mehola, you shall anoint as a prophet in your place. You know, God always has a balancing act. God always has a balancing act. He tries to bring in something here. He tries to bring in something here. And then he tries to add something else here. So you will have a cohesive outcome. If any three of them were left alone by themselves, it will be a lot of destruction. Whole bunch of nothing. That's why uh, as a church we need to understand. If the church is not playing the role. He have anointed the government to do certain things. He have anointed the other people to do certain jobs. They are having their own jobs. And they don't have balance in their life. If Elisha upon whom the mantle was thrown. Is not doing his job. There can't be balance. We talk a lot about when we talk about the government, we talk about checks and balances. Don't you think God has a system like that? In all reality, everything is going to be balanced by Elisha. The last strike, that's why he says, It shall be whoever escapes the sword of Hezel, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. The responsibility of the one upon whom the mantle has fallen. He has to cover the mantle. The mantle has so much power. That's why even, even the Bible clearly tells us pray for the leaders in authority. Why? If they have the supreme authority, why are you asked to pray? And the government is upon his shoulder. Upon whom? Jesus, the head of the church. We are his body. The government will only function well if the government of his church operates well. When we are not operating as his claim, we have been claimed to be this. I don't want to be this, but I have been claimed for this. Amen. Why would I want to lay my hands on the sick? It's a claim of the Lord over me. Not for my excitement, not for my delight, but it is a claim over my life. That's why I cannot run away from a fight because God has not given me an instruction to run away. But instead he asked me to run into the storm. Because he is fixing to pee, bring peace to that storm. But unless and until I enter into the storm, it's not going to happen. The thing that we are playing as a church, as, as a believer, as someone whom Jesus has a claim over, we are trying to scurry around. 
we are just circling around. Maybe for a point we can do that, but there comes a time where we need to stand in front of the walls for the walls to break. Not just marching around the walls, marching around the walls. It is time for the walls to break. Can somebody shout that? It is time for the walls to break. We are circling around those walls. It is time that we bulldoze the walls and say, Jesus has made the way where there is no way. If you are waiting for the doors to show up, let me tell you something. You don't need a door to be open because Jesus is the door. Take that sledgehammer and break those walls. Break those walls, whatever that wall may be. It is time that we use the power of God to our advantage rather than sitting behind and waiting for something to happen. Waiting for something to manifest because there is a claim over us. Why is the government going and doing all these things? Why are people full of sin? Let me tell you the answer is church. Because you are not where you have been claimed. When we are running away from our claim, we can never have the plan of God fulfilling in our lives or around our lives. God has put a claim on my life. God has put a claim on my life. Come on church, God has put a claim on my life. Come on, God has put a claim on my life because that is, that is your identity. Nobody wants us. Nobody needs us. But he does. If you have not realized, you, need, you should know. You should just have a quick analysis. Your own body doesn't want you. That's why it always tries to fall. Sometimes fall apart. Nobody wants us but him. He sees the treasure in us that nobody can see. That's why he put a claim over us. That's why I know how filthy I was. But I look at the claim. God, you claimed me. Now I am pure. Now I am clean. Now I am fit for this. The world has written me off for I don't qualify for many things. But he says, I put a claim over you. And every single day for me, I can't work for the world. I have to work for the one who have claimed me. So he can build me up. He can restore me. He can regroup me. Whatever needs to be added, he will do that for me. That was Elisha's journey. As soon as the mantle has come upon him, he fought for it. He prayed for it. He did everything that is needed. So when when Elijah was leaving, the mantle has fallen on him. You know what he did? (coughs) As soon as the mantle had come, he started using it. Can I be honest with you? Many Many of you don't even use your mantle. Many of us, we don't even use our mantle that the Lord has placed upon us. We oftentimes try to fulfill God's plan with our own strength when God's word clearly declares, it is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Our positioning ought to be for the spirit to flow through us. It can only happen through your mantle. Mantle operation. Go with me to the Second Kings chapter 7 starting at verse 1. This, before this, the Second Kings 6 we read last, last week. It ends with a famine. The Syrians have besieged Israel. And because of that there was a famine where a mother was, was eating. Mothers were eating their own children. Own children. That's the plan. That's the complaint. Think about that. A forced famine. I want us to understand that forced famine concept. And that is what we are entering into right now. 
It's not a famine because the land have been cursed. It's a famine because somebody is forcing it. I want us to understand you may be seeing the signs of this and that. Oh, the egg prices are going up. This is going up. That's, those are not the signs. I want us to understand something in the spirit. There is a famine that is being forced on this land over and over. Above everything, primarily there is a spiritual famine. That has been forced on the throats of our children. Forced into their throats. A spiritual famine. Every single kid. Look, look at this. The younger the generations. They have more at their dispense. They have been given so much more than we, any other older generation have started with. Or even ended with. They have been given so much. So much is available for them. Yet their suicide rate is more. They may have several different statistics for it. But I'm going to tell you something. It all boils down to one thing. The famine. Forced famine. God and having faith in God. Having faith in the only one savior is being taken away. Let me be very honest, this nation is prosperous not because they are financially strong, but because they have faith in God. That was the only foundation for this nation, that's why it prospered and it continues to prosper. In God we trust. If that is taken, that is what is being taken away from us. Faith for our children is hard. It's hard for them to hold on to their faith because everybody is confusing them. Every system that is out there is trying to take, a, take them away from their faith. And not only the adults, not only the youngins, but the adults. You know, every week we, we look at something, there is nothing, it's not judgmental, but you know, there are more people lining up to go to a yoga studio than to our church. I want us to understand how confused we are. How much this famine is taking over us. But that's not the news. That's, that's just the fact of the matter. But the good news is here. When the church can operate under the mantle. There was this situation where two mothers were trying. Who would eat their own child. And then the next day they are planning to eat the other child and she hid the child. That is the situation, that is the, the, the extent of this famine. Now into that same trouble, same storm, now comes the man under the mantle. The man under the mantle. In other words, the man who has a claim. The man who is operating under his claim. That's the man comes into the equation. And when that man comes in, the uh, second Kings chapter 7, starting at verse 1, it reads like this. Then Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow about this time, a seah of fine flour shall be so sold for a shekel. And two shears of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. While the forced famine is wreaking havoc, the man of God comes there with the word of God. Under the mantle. He brings his mantle into action. The king of Syria couldn't do it. The king of Israel couldn't do it. But the man of God who has been anointed and appointed. He is bringing the balance. And not only bringing the balance. He is exiting out. No this trouble shall not last. Instead, he is dictating a destiny for the trouble. You're going to fall, and you're going to fall greatly, because by this time, I'm going to replace your value. Oh, look at what is happening here. Look at the Democrats, look at the Republicans, look at these people, look at the Congress. Everybody is running with all... No, 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 no. I, I, I appreciate your concern, but I want us to understand. Understand your position as the one 
with the mantle. What is happening with my family? Look at what is falling apart. Come on, men of God, stand up. Stand up and stand against the storm. Stand against the storm. Speak over the storm. You shall not pass in Jesus' name. How dare you touch my child? And he gives a destiny tomorrow about this time. A shea of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two shears of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. So an officer who on, on, um, on whose hand the king leaned answered to the man of God and said, Look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could, the, uh, could this thing be done? And he said, In fact, you shall see it with your own eyes, but you shall not eat of it. You see that? The distribution of blessing and curse. He is eliminating doubt. A society that is filled with doubt. Full of doubt. What are we full of right now in the society? Full of doubt. Full of fear. Everything is driven with fear. In fear. The, the, the prime requirement for a miracle, right atmosphere for a miracle, is when somebody is full of faith. Instead of working on filling ourselves with faith, we are filling ourselves with fear. We are filling ourselves with doubt. The man of God had to el eliminate that also. That is something only church can do. That is something only the one with the mantle can do. Unfortunately, many times if we go to the church these days, most of the churches are appropriating fears. Appropriating fears. Nobody is trying to cast the demons. Nobody is trying to speak healing over people. Nobody is trying to encourage people to operate in the gifts of the spirit. Nobody. We are not educated enough in the spirit realm to operate in the spirit realm. Instead, we have been reduced ourselves to being just a mere man. Tell that to Elisha. You are just a mere man. He is changing the whole course of that nation. Now uh, there were four lepers, men at the entrance of the gate. They said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, if, uh, and we shall die there. If we sit here, we die also. Now therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. You know, did you see Elisha is not doing anything here? He have released the will of God and walked away and it is doing its job. Things are unfolding. What needs to unfold, God will take care of that. But you will have to position yourself to operate under the mantle, not operate under the fear. If you continue to operate in your fear and in your doubts, you will never be able to see what your, what your mantle can accomplish for you or for the community around you. They arose, fifth verse, and they arose a, a, a twilight to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, to their surprise, to their surprise, they are not aware, but you should. To their surprise, no one was there. For the Lord had caused, look at this, for the Lord had caused the army of Syrians to hear the noise of the chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of great army. So they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of Hittites, the kings of Egyptians to attack us. You know how this fear has come into them? Because if you go back a couple of chapters, Elisha have shown them how to bring the army from heaven on the mountain. If you don't remember, go back and listen to the couple of sermons in the past. 
he was able to accomplish it because he was operating under the mantle that's why operating under the mantle is not a one day event it has to be a lifestyle because what you do today matters tomorrow what you do tomorrow matters for the day after tomorrow everything is connected that's why God expects his disciples to be consistent one day I am operating in this kindness, tomorrow I don't have to. One day I'm operating under this mantle, tomorrow I don't want to. Doesn't work like that. That's why I keep saying you have a claim over your life. Like it or not, when you get into a contract for a job, whether you are feeling good or not, you will have to go sell them tacos. Because that's your contract. If you don't do that, you ain't getting paid. Amen? You want God to pay you for you to sit around? Come on, warriors. Seventh verse, therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact. Their tents, their horses, and their donkeys. Um, did you see this? Nothing like this has happened. All these people have come to wage a war because the man of God is able to deflect it with the, the power that God has bestowed on him. And he was operating under the mantle because of that, it made room. Your gift will make room. Therefore they arose and fled twilight, left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent, ate and drank, and carried from it silver and gold and clothing, and went and hid them. And then they came back and entered in another tent, and carried some from there also, and went and hid it. Then they said to one another, we are not doing right. This day is a day of good news. And we remain silent. If we wait until the morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now therefore come, let us go and tell the king's household. Many historians believe, and it, it seems to be the possibility, one of these four lepers was one of Elisha's disciple, Gehazi. Why it matters, I'll tell you why later. But in here, he goes. He, they all go, let us go to the king's household. Tenth verse, so they went and called to the gatekeepers of the city and told them, saying, we went to the Syrian camp, and surprisingly, no one was there. Not a human sound, only horses and donkeys tied and tents intact. And the gatekeepers called out, and they told it to, to, to the king's household. So the king arose in the night and said to his servants, let me now tell you what Syrians have done to us. They know that he, we, we are are hungry therefore they have gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field saying when they come out of the city we shall catch them alive and get into the city and one of his servants answered and said please let several men take five of the remaining horses which are left in the city uh, look they, they may either become like all the multitude of the Israel that are left in it or indeed I say they may become like all the multitude of Israel left from those who are consumed so let us send them and see therefore they took two chariots and with horses and the king sent them in the direction of the Syrian army saying go and see we are expecting to be in in this story that is the church's problem you're expecting to be the lepers you're expecting to be in the king's palace you're expecting to be in this but God is saying can you initiate my miracles can you start the miracle? Give it a starting time. Remember this thing. All things are, are, are good you know, when they are done in its time. He makes all things beautiful in its time. But somebody has to start the time. That's what Mary did. 
Woman, it is not my time. Jesus, she starts his time for the miracle. Can we start God's clock? We have the responsibility to start the miracles rather than waiting for somebody to do something. Somebody to start the revival so I can participate in it. Do you know you have the power to jump start this, those revivals? That is the power of your mantle. None of them needed the mantle for them to do all the job that they are doing if... This has not been initiated. I want us to understand the layers of the warfare here. Imagine this whole story without the man under the mantle doing his job. We are so stuck in, in, in being a part of this thing. I want us to do this. I want to feed the poor. I want us to... No, no, no. Let us create that atmosphere for that miracle to happen. Amen. If we don't, that is where we, are, we have lost our course. We are no longer starting miracles. We are waiting for miracles. We are waiting for the right atmosphere. Right time is now. Can somebody declare that boldly? Right time is now. That is your power of your faith. God didn't come to anybody that has been, that has had a miracle. When they were walking by, they went and captured Jesus. They went and gotten their miracles. Amen. <clears throat> so he goes, they, 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 they brought everything in, go see the 15th verse, and they went after them to the Jordan, and indeed all the road was full of garments, weapons which Syrians had thrown away in their haste. So the messengers written to hold the king. Then the people went out and plundered the tents of the Syrians, so a shea of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two sheas of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. According to what? According to the word of the Lord. We have to have the word of the Lord upon our lives. We need to be declaring the word of the Lord in our lives, in and around our lives. So the word of God will manifest itself. Can we be bold and declare, I have the word? Come on, church. I have the word. Every one of you has a prophecy in you. Start prophesying, man of God. Start prophesying, woman of God. There is a prophecy in you. Can somebody lay your hands on your belly and say, I have a prophecy in me. Come on, church. I have a prophecy in me. Because we have been called by God to declare his will. Declare his goodness. So the whole whole creation will fall flat at his feet and declare Jesus is Lord. Let us not let them miss their opportunity. The famine has to bow down. The destruction has to bow down. The lack has to bow down. Sickness has to bow down. Every single thing that has a name has to bow down. The cancer has to bow down. I am so glad. I am surrounded around me where God is doing miracles. Cancers are being healed. Glory be to God in heaven. I have seen them happen. Stage four. Yeah. I have a stage four weapon too. Amen. Glory be to God in heaven. As a matter of fact, I have a weapon after the stage five. Even if you are dead, I can resurrect you. Amen. I still remember these days. It's just a funny thing. My dad, one time I was doing something and he said, if you do this, I'm going to die. I looked into his face eye to eye and said this. I will resurrect you. <laughs> he was baffled. <laughs> he didn't know what to do with that. But I was full of faith. 
So it happened just as the man of God has spoken to the king, saying to shears of barley, for a shekel and she of fine flour for a shekel shall be sold tomorrow at this gate in the at this time in the gate of Samaria who dictated the time here who started the time don't forget don't underestimate it this is this is purely spiritual principle I'm not trying to make you arrogant I'm not doing that you have to start the process you have the ability to start the time Jesus is obliged when, he, when, when, when Mary started the process, did Jesus walk away from it? He did the miracle. The woman with the issue of blood came and touched. Did, she, did he stop? Who initiated that miracle? <laughs> Even though God made the room, he makes the room for everything. There is room for you to be prosperous. But start it. When you are giving your tithe, what are you doing? You are starting it. When you are sowing your seed, you are starting it. You are giving it a time. You have to manifest. And that officer had answered the man of God said, Now look, if the Lord make, would make windows of heaven, could such thing be? And he said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. So it happened to him, for the people trampled him in the gate and he died. That's a celebration, y'all. Elisha killed. Remember the anointing for Elisha is to kill. What did he kill? The, he killed famine. He killed fear. He killed doubt. He killed those things, the things that matters. The, you know, the structures that are holding this battle together. Let us destroy those structures. The principalities, the powers that are trying to invade. Because we don't war, wage war against flesh and blood. There are these principalities that are trying to hold us. Let us destroy them in the name of Jesus. The structures being gone in Jesus' name. So we can have the building of the kingdom of God. That's a fourth famine. Then there comes another famine here. Now, 2 Kings 8 chapter starting at verse 1. It reads like this. Then Elisha spoke to the woman who, whose son he had restored to life saying, Arise and go, you and your household. Stay wherever you can. For the Lord has called for a famine. Furthermore, it will come upon the land for seven years. There was a forced famine. He dealt with it differently. Now there is a different famine that was coming. And it is going to stay for seven years. He knew that. But the woman of God found favor with Elisha. What did he do? He gave her an exit plan. Exit out of famine. Don't die in the famine. Go out. Seven years. You want to do this? Go find a place. Live anywhere. And as you read the rest of this chapter, you can see that the Lord will also restore everything back to her. The king will restore everything back to her. I'm just going to leave it. You know, I'm, I'm, the fourth verse there I want to read. Then the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God. How did Gehazi made it to the palace? That's why I said one of them four is Gehazi. And when he chose that path of redemption, this is many people's problem. God gives a path of redemption, but they never take it. Everybody will be given an opportunity to take the path of redemption. Gehazi was stuck with leprosy. He should not enter into the public square. They can only live outside. But look at this. When he chose this path of redemption, he went all the way in where he not only got healed, but he found a place with the king. You know, king is not going to let a leper sit with him. By this time, he should have been healed. He has become king's counselor because he chose the path of redemption. Many times that is another problem with many believers. They don't choose the path of redemption. God gives an opportunity to redeem. Strike one, you escape. Strike two, you escape. Strike three. Be careful. Be careful what is coming. 
God gives us a path of redemption. We got to pick it up. We got to pick it up, commit to it, and see through it. I always feel sad when with my brother. God has given me so many opportunities of paths of redemption. He never took one. He ended up dying. So I want us to understand something. God is fixing to change the dimensions. God is counting on us that we may operate against famine. Kill the famine. Not participate in it. You have the power to destroy the enemy's power. That is what your battle mantle is for. This is where John John gives the job in in John 21 God, God gives the job Jesus gives the job to Peter So when they had eaten breakfast Jesus said to Simon Peter Simon son of Jonah do you love me more than this He said to him yes Lord you know that I love you He said feed my lambs He said to him again and said the second time Simon son of Jonah do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, I know I, that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him, Third time, do you love me? He said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Then Jesus said, Feed my sheep purpose of your mantle is to take care of his business not yours not any man's business the talents the gifts the everything that God has bestowed on you is for you to take care of his business that is the purpose of the mantle famine or not your purpose still works there could be famine but you can still feed the sheep Amen. There is so much power in you that you have not been using. Matthew 10, 40 through 42. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. I can teach you about two things here. Are you receiving the prophet? Are you receiving the prophecy? Are you receiving the word from the Lord? Are you receiving the man of God God has put in your life? Are we receiving the ministry of his church upon us? That's one part. The second part is, are we, we, are we in a place to give? The prophet has to prophesy. That's when they receive. The mantle's job is to be able to overflow. They can receive. We are so focused on other things. We are to be focusing on what we do. Consistently day in and day out. I'm sorry that I offended you. That you don't want to be a part of this. But I have to still continue. I still have to continue. I'm sorry you didn't like the way I preached last week. But I still have to continue. I'm sorry that you don't like me, but that's okay. I still have to continue. I'm sorry my body don't want to participate with me, but I still have to continue. The mantle has a claim over me. The mantle has a demand on me. I'm, I'm sad that when I laid my hands on the sick, they didn't get healed, but I still have to continue. I have to continue. I'm sad somebody didn't come to Christ yesterday even though I poured out my heart. I prayed for them, they didn't come, but I still have to continue. That's my mantle. We need to let the spirit break that alabaster jar. Let him break out. Let him set us free. Let him break us out of all these chains that are holding us back from being in the center of his will. You don't know how many of you are living on the outskirts as those four lepers when you should be with Elisha under the mantle 
where we will be fixing the problem. And he goes on and talks about the reward, prophet's reward. And he who receives a righteous man in the name of righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. Whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of cold water in the name of this a disciple, assuredly I say to you, he shall by no means leave, lose his reward. You know how they are being rewarded? Because you are playing your role. When we can play our role, they can participate in it, they can be rewarded. If we as a church, as his church, the one who is under the mantle is not playing our role, what is there for them to receive from? We as a man of God, we have to lead. We as a woman of God, we have to do our job. We as the daughter of God, we as a son of God, we have to do our job as under the mantle. You have a claim over your life. Man of God, you have a claim over your life. Woman of God, I want to plead with you. You have a claim over your life. Don't worry about how much you're going to pay. Pay the bills. Women, we are so caught up in how much, how many bills we got to pay, how much we have to do this or that. Yes, there are needs of life, but I also want you to know how much are you going to use your mantle should be a top priority should be a top priority mantle has the power to kill the man made famine mantle has the power to kill the man made famine are you ready to face it that ought to be a question you need to ask yourself don't be like Isaac wanting to run to Egypt because there is a famine the same Isaac, Isaac, when he positioned under the mantle, what, did ha what happened? He prospered beyond prosperity in the time of famine. Mantle offers an escape route to any famine. Are you, are you willing to help navigate? Elisha helped the lady come out, get out of this mess. When we have the word from the Lord, we can navigate. Let us not be a part of this. Let us not be a part of that. Let us be a part of this. Amen. Can, you, can we receive from the mantle? That's one question. The second question. Can we adjust to give from the mantle?